Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Pater here. We are on like day four of just downpour rain. So I let my boy have my raincoat. So I'm just gonna get soaking wet, but what I wanna talk about is I have a, several folks that I'm advising on dairy cows. And I wanna talk about, I always go through, if you email me or if you message me, and you're like, oh, I'm excited, I'm looking at a dairy cow and I'm doing all these things. I try very hard <laughs> to be very honest with you about the reality that you're about to get in. It's wonderful, okay? No doubt about that. But the elements don't wait on you, okay? <laughs> Do they? They don't wait. And depending upon when you have your calves and how long your milking cycle goes and all of those things, you're going to be enduring a lot of different things during different seasons, particularly with depending on where you live. I probably have mud on my face. I don't know. Down there is my stanchion for now because my goats are going to be occupying the barn. So even when it's super hot, it's 90 degrees outside, you endure this. Some other things you need to think about let me see if I can get you out of here. Is I get a lot of questions from people that ask about what type of cow should they buy and the age. Let me tell you right now, and I'm sorry I'm so close, but I'm really trying to manage out here in all this weather. And it's just, it, right now is really good. It's been awful all morning. So we're a little delayed on our chores. But this is why I do late barn checks too. When you do a late barn check at night and you can... Are you kidding me? When you do a late barn check at night, okay, I always like to make sure there's a little dab of hay and a little extra food and nobody's out of anything. Because a lot of times you go, I'll just get that first thing in the morning. Well, first thing in the morning can be a monsoon. So don't do that. But I get a lot of questions about dairy cows and what kind of dairy cows you want to get. Now, listen, I, you know, I have a lot of history in my family with milking, but I myself didn't grow up on a dairy farm, okay? Just like most of you out there, most of us did not. But I've been doing this for several years now and I've learned a lot in terms of what you're dealing with. Some folks jump to what seems to be the youngest cow situation or the cheapest. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, that may be good depending on your situation. It could also be a sad mistake. Let's say you've got two cows that you have a choice between. I really want you to think about, do you have a cow that's in good health? Do you have a cow that is gentle? Do you have a cow that's a, that can, you know, has been proven to calve, you know, really well? Has good healthy calves? Doesn't have any problems? Let me give this to you, baby. Go ahead. All of the above. You need to think about you as well. We think about, oh, well, if I get this, it's cheaper. Well, let me tell you what. If you get a cow that is new to being milked, maybe he's only had one calf or none, you really don't know a lot about the dynamics in terms of how she's going to perform. If you can find a nice dairy cow that has already been milked, broken in, so to speak, has already gotten used to being touched and handled and all of these things happening in and out of this type of weather and with you and with hands or whatever, it's probably gonna be a better scenario for you. You need to think about that. If you get a cow that's restless, that is um, easy, that's skittish, and you're new at this, I'm gonna tell you what, it's a challenge to get her used to having all of these things done. That happened with me. What worked for me, however, is this. My cow, yeah, there's stuff everywhere. I mean, it's just going to be like this. We're, it, we're covered up. I think we're supposed to get some good weather tomorrow. We got to dry out. We are just covered up. Haven't been able to plant. Just, we're just covered up. This cow down here was living on a beef farm, and she was going to slaughter because she wasn't, you know, she wasn't being milked. So I bought her. I was offered a tremendous deal. And she was already bred, which we're hoping that's the situation down here. We don't know yet. 
I got her in November. She did not calve till May, had the calf till May. So from November, and we've talked about this in a video before, from November all the way to the following late spring, every single day I was with this cow. I, I was told, you better be with the cow. Touch the cow, love the cow, give the cow treats. When she's calm and cool, stand in certain places, brush her love on her every day, several times a day. It is critical to your own safety and welfare that you do this because, as you know, and I'm not trying to rehash my particular instance just for a video, what I'm trying to do is warn you, there's a lot of people that, do, that don't know that I was injured. And, and it wasn't because she was aggressive. It was because we were getting used to each other. I was getting used to being around her. She was being used to being around me. I miscalculated doing something in bad weather and I got hit in the face really hard. I mean, to be honest with you, like I told you before, it was a miracle. They told me that I wasn't disfigured or lost my teeth or everything. I mean, and it cost over $5,000, okay? So what I'm trying to tell you is, listen to me, folks, and I'm no expert. I just have a little bit of experience. Going the cheaper route in the beginning, which may sound like a killer deal, if you don't know what you're doing with these animals, in the long run, is going to cost you double or triple in medical bills. It could hurt your child. It could hurt you. You could get into a situation where you miscalculated the cow's health because you didn't have enough experience in knowing. So you really need to talk with people that have hands-on experience with these animals. I will also tell you, talking to cattle farmers is good, but I will tell you right now, just because they deal with beef cattle, doesn't mean they know a thing about dairy. That's not a knock. They know about general things about the cow, okay? So you need to talk to them about the demeanor and everything. But I can tell you right now, the demeanor of certain dairy cows versus certain meat cows is just not the same. Talking to someone about how they feed meat cows to feed them off and grain them off to feed, take them to the stockyard is not gonna be the same regimen that you use and do for a dairy cow because you're gonna be consuming the raw milk. All of these factors need to be investigated and looked into. So I've been talking with some folks this week, some folks you guys even know, and trying to give some good advice. And I'm always, you know, I try to be very honest and leery. And sometimes it, you end up telling people and they're like, really? And I'm like, listen, you know, yeah, it's a very big investment. This cow right here, she's my biggest investment on this farm. I am right now if she calves, because see, we bred her later, so we're kind of in the wait and, wait and see mode. If she doesn't, I think I've got some goats going to be producing, so it's okay. So it'll be what it's meant to be. We're going to artificially inseminate her next time. I'm already, this is the, <laughs> I'm already online shopping <clears throat> for bull semen, and we're going for a full uh, jer jersey uh, for next time, and we can also get it to where, depending on the cost, where they can do all these, they can split it and, and do all these wonderful things to try to guarantee you a heifer. So that's what we're going to go for. So I'll have two dairy cows too. So I want to show this to you because I want you to understand you're going to be out here. Yeah, I'm just, I'm here. I'm, you're getting soaking wet. Now, if you're milking the cow down in the stanchion or in the barn, depending on your setup, you may not necessarily get wet, but you're going to get cold. You're going to get dirty. And the last thing you want to be fussing with in, in, in bad weather of any sort or if you don't feel good, or what if your kid is sick and your husband's at work? The last thing you want, need to be doing is down there somewhere wrestling with a cow that's never been milked and never been broke and has no idea what's going on. It takes months of prep. And if you get yourself into that situation, you better have some folks helping you. When I started milking her for the first week, I had my husband with me and I had old Fred back there that knows everything there's to know about beef and cattle because he lived the whole life and he still does, okay? So, you know, I had a lot of hands-on help and I took every bit of that and I didn't get offended because, I, you know, I was like this. I don't know. I need to know. I've already been hurt. I understand. Tell me what I need to do. And those people were looking out for the best interest of me, my health, her, and the quality of having safe, raw milk because that's another whole level of dealings when you're talking about raw milk. You wanna make sure you're doing everything right for her and with you so that you remain safe in what you're doing, right? All right, so we're gonna go in and we're gonna get out of this weather and finish up the barn. So hopefully we'll get some good weather. So good luck with looking, for, you know, shopping for your cows 
ask a lot of questions and folks like me that are you know milkmaids and that we do this because we love it we give you honest advice because we want you to be happy we want our advice to be good and we want you to be safe take care out there we'll talk to you soon <laughs> hey baby <laughs> you, he's a sweetie yeah all right guys take care out there hope you're having a great day wanted to say one more thing can you hear me the comparison between a young cow that is a dairy cow that you're going to be milking say she's two or three compared to say one that's five six seven eight years old that's reaching her peak i gotta cut this the difference between the two also that you need to know is that a cow that has her first calf or even her second is not going to be producing the amount of milk that say one will produce when she's going into her peak. I know a lot of people look at milk production and they say, oh my gosh, I'm going to sell raw milk or I'm going to share milk or I'm going to do all of these things. And they look at statistics on a jersey or they look at the statistics of their cow and they make assumptions that that's what they're going to get. A lot of folks get a jersey. I have a Holstein jersey down here. Folks, she hasn't even reached her peak. Depending on the day, depending on what the calf's done, depending on the weather, um, depending on a lot of, depending on her mood and she stuck her, you know, her foot in the bucket, I may not get three or four gallons of milk, that milking. I may be lucky to get one. So you really need to know that just because you even talk to people or because you read statistics, the reality in what you may single-handedly get versus what you think you're going to get are probably going to be two different things. And I'm basing this information on a single family cow in a single family situation. Okay, I'm not talking about a massive dairy with milk machines and five employees and all of that. I'm talking about me to you so do your homework know what you're getting into and what you think you're getting you're not probably going to end up getting for several years based on many factors okay so always know that in advance i hope you heard everything that i said because the rain continues to pour time for some coffee y'all take care